feelings are where the passion lies. It's not yeah. in statistics. Yeah, you don't yeah, yeah, get yeah. Passion. Some people yeah. get passionate about numbers, but it's like, we're talking about human beings here. So I believe that we should have stricter gun laws and just more gun control in general. Okay. All right. So um, your idea is that we should enact laws to keep people from from having guns for for what purpose? Right. I think that. Well, first of all, I wish that there were no guns at all. You know, like I wish okay. that people couldn't easily get access to guns aside from you know hunting rifles and and things like that um i think that guns are dangerous people don't know how to use them properly um you hear about school shootings not anymore but when schools were in session live there were school shootings like seemingly every other week um, there are larger shootings nationally. Um, the one that comes to mind is the horrific shooting in Las Vegas. The man from the hotel room shot at a crowd of, I don't know, what was it? A thousand people or something like that at a concert. So I know that these are isolated incidents, but like they would not happen if people did not have access to them. Um, so I think that there's more harm that comes from having guns in circulation than there is good from it. Like, I don't know of like a situation where a gun has really come in handy other than in law enforcement maybe. Um, and even then that's really contentious, right? So. It's just hard for me to think about the ways in which guns like add to our society. Okay. All right. So, um, so primarily you're, you're, you know, that guns have been used to, to hurt people and there's a yeah. lot of that. Um, and, and so your hope is that by, by legislating in this way, it might reduce, um, gun violence. Is that, is that the idea? Yeah. And it would have to happen at like a federal level. <clears throat> like, I know that states have different regulations um, in terms of who can purchase a gun and how it's regulated. And it would just have to be like a full scale federal, federally like mandated <laughs> change. Why, why would it have to be federal? Well, because each state has, I, has like different I feel like each state has different laws in terms of like, you know, you can have like a concealed permit mm -hmm. in some states, for instance. Um, so I feel like it would have to be something that like the federal government would have to enforce, right? Because each state sort of has their own way that they enforce and regulate guns to like civilians. So just to make sure I understand where you're coming from, um... I'm I'm curious why why it needs to be federal. Are you suggesting that that let's say uh, you know one state, um, Michigan, enacts gun control laws or stricter gun control? Are you saying it wouldn't be effective unless all fifty states do? Exactly. It's like how, how come? I guess I'm using this the COVID <laughs> as an example. Each state was kind of left to their own devices, and uh -huh. I feel like there was a very. It just seemed like each state handled the pandemic differently, given okay. what you know the government was saying. It didn't seem that the government was giving the federal government was giving a lot of like you have to do this. This is federally mandated. It was more of like, well, a state can decide to do what it wants to do. And that wasn't really effective in terms of lowering the COVID numbers. So it was just like an example. Okay. Like I can just see the states being like, okay, 
the government is saying that we should do this, but like we're allowed to do what we we're allowed to interpret that how we want to interpret it. And this is what we're doing. Okay. So I'm going to, um, there's a chat. Um, I don't know if you, you might have to open it up, but, um, but I'm just going to put in some things that, that sure. maybe we'll, we'll come back to, but I'm hearing okay. that there's a federal component to this. Yeah. Um, and then there's maybe exceptions for hunting rifles. Yes. Um, and, um, and, and I think maybe the most important part of this is right. Your, your ultimate goal is to help people. It's to reduce, um, like, deaths, violent deaths. Yeah, right? it's to reduce... Um, pain and suffering. You know, pain and suffering. It's to keep people safe. Okay. All right. Um, good. So I think I, think I understand your, your, your claim. Um, just going to write that down. So... Um, so on a scale from zero to a hundred, where a hundred is you're completely sure that what you want to do is right, is best. You have no doubt whatsoever. You couldn't possibly be wrong. And zero is you couldn't possibly be right. You think it's the worst idea in the world. Where, where do you fall? I mean, right now I'm at a 100. <laughs> you're at a hundred. Okay. All right. All right. So. So again, 100 means you couldn't possibly be wrong. Right. OK. All right. All right. So the whole point of this is I'm going to try to push back. And we're going we're gonna to talk about this. We're going to see you know, what justifications you have and, and whether that uh, makes sense. So what's getting you to 100%? What reason do you have? What reasons do you have for holding this belief? I mean, to me, it just seems like logical common sense like you remove a m weapon that murders people okay i mean then that sort of removes people's ability to enact mass murdering and to shoot up schools and to shoot up synagogues and churches and sure. you know if you make something harder for people to access, it seems like if you take something away, mm -hmm. it just seems like a logical, so that, that that logically would follow that there wouldn't be as many mass murders or school shootings or public shootings in general. Okay. Um, so do you think there are mass murders in, in countries that, that have strict gun control? I'm not sure. I mean, I know that New Zealand just had, um, I can't exactly remember when it happened within the past year, maybe they had a um, mass shooting at a um, mosque. Okay. And the president of New Zealand immediately enacted like gun control laws like banned guns um i don't know if that has resulted in fewer mass right. shootings um but i there's so much going on in the world but yeah, i haven't yeah. like seen or heard of yeah, any yeah. like mass shootings in new zealand since right you would think that the media, if a president were to take something like that and create a controversial change, and then there was a mass murder after the fact, the media would jump on that, right? And be okay. like, look at this, like they try to do it and it failed. But I right. don't know. I feel like we haven't really heard anything like that. Um, so I'm going to ask you a hypothetical. Yeah. Um, so imagine you found out that after, let's say, New Zealand enacted a law like this, maybe another country, um, you found out that actually there still were mass murders. How would that affect your confidence and your belief? Would you still be at 100? I guess I wouldn't be at a 100. I would try to figure out, I would want to know like what went wrong. Like, is there a loophole? Is there like, you know, were you allowed to keep your guns? but now nobody else can have a gun. Like, is it just, was it like an honor system? Like, 
bring in your guns, no questions asked, like mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Were they not like more forceful in terms of like getting people to let go of their guns? Um, okay. So, so, so we're going to really live in the world of hypotheticals here. Imagine, right, okay. imagine a country, you know, um, I don't even know the name of it. We, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, some, some random country and, and they have incredibly strict gun control, right? Mm -hmm. No one is allowed to own guns at all. It's illegal, um, punishable by force of death. Okay. Really strict. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now imagine that they still had violent killings, maybe mass killings. Now this is purely hypothetical, right? This country doesn't exist. This isn't going on. There's no, there's no, it's none of this. But imagine you found this out. Would you still be at a hundred? So this isn't a trick question. I'm trying to figure out whether, right, you're... I'm trying to think if I would still be at a 100. Okay. I feel like... I feel like the problem wouldn't be the law. So in that okay. sense, like, I would still be at a 100. I mean, I think, I guess I would be. That's really hard. Okay. All right. So, so I'm hearing maybe you would still be at a hundred. Um, and so that, that makes me wonder is, is the evidence that, that you said, right? You, you thought, how could it possibly be otherwise? It just logically makes sense. Maybe that's not the best reasoning because even if it were to still happen you'd still be confident that you were right you see what i mean i guess like like i guess a bigger question so that didn't shake you from 100 percent. what could you find out that might bring you down from 100 percent? how many countries would have to still have violent killings or something like that I mean, if it were like a one-off thing, that wouldn't shake me. If it were okay. like ten a majority, countries. if it were a majority of them, then yeah, ten, even ten probably would. Okay, so ten countries have strict gun control, and those ten countries still have um, violent killings. You might come down from a hundred. Yeah, but I feel like having a law and enforcing it are two different things. Okay. If so, that makes sense. So yeah, what, what I'm hearing is that um, if you were to find that out, if you were to find out, oh, look, here's a country, here's a country, here's a country, you might think, hmm, maybe they're not actually um, enforcing this the right way. Right. Okay, so is it possible that there's never a right way to enforce it. Like, like what would it require to enforce something unfallibly or infallibly? I mean, uh, I mean, I'm not sure I understand the question. Okay. Yeah. Let me, I can, if you have yeah. a question, I can, or I can try to re restate it. Yeah. But it sounds like you're concerned, right? Like, there's a difference between just proclaiming something to be law and then actually enforcing it. Right. And you're concerned that maybe, maybe um, it would be difficult to enforce this law or it would be, right, impossible to enforce this law 100% or something like that. Right. People might slip through. Yeah. And so I'm, 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 I'm actually asking, like, do you even think it is possible to enforce a law without fail? No. So, so if it's impossible to do this thing, then, then maybe there actually would never be a way for you to come down from 100%. Like, no matter, right, how many countries enact this law, 
um, because it's impossible to to like force every single person to obey the law mm -hmm. then maybe you could never come down from 100 like no matter how many countries this happened to you'd never change your mind mm, probably not H how do you feel about that I mean, hi, baby. Marigold has an opinion about that. Okay. <laughs> um, how do I feel that I'm at a 100 regardless of like whether a law can be fully enforced? Even more, it seems like and I don't don't let me put words in your mouth, but but maybe what I'm hearing is, like no matter what evidence we had, that this kind of idea wasn't working, you'd still be at a hundred. Well, I think it just transcends any type of law, right? Like the way what I'm, like I guess what I'm saying is like regardless of whether the laws are being enforced or not, like I'm always going to feel like you shouldn't own a gun. You should not allow people to have guns. <laughs> like regardless of what laws are out there or aren't out there. I don't know if that answers like what you're, what you're asking, but it's just like, regardless of what lawmakers decide, I'm always going to think that like people shouldn't be allowed to own guns. <laughs> so, okay. So I'm going to try to repeat back to you what I'm hearing to, okay. to see if it, to see if I'm understanding right. <clears throat> Um, right. I, I heard that you have an interest in enacting gun control laws in order to help people. Right. But what I'm hearing now is that even if you found out that it didn't help people, you would still be in favor of gun control laws. Is that, is that right? I mean, no, it's I okay. Guess... It's, 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 uh... <laughs> I mean, no, okay. So I see what you're saying. I mean... I mean, then if it turned out that it was, like, actually hurting people more than okay. it was helping them, okay. then, like, obviously I wouldn't be for it. Okay, okay. But I just so... can't think of a scenario in which that would be true. Okay. So... So we, we've talked about the idea that what if, what if we look at all these countries and actually it, it doesn't, let's say it doesn't help curb violence, right? Let's say people switch to using, you know, um, grenades and then, <laughs> and then maybe you want to outlaw grenades and they switch to, I don't know, um, pipe bombs, right? You can mm -hmm. make them in your garage or something. And, it, and it's just right. ideological people just keep doing ideological things. Right. Um, and, and you're saying, you know what, I'd still be in favor of gun control, even, even though it's not having the effect that I had hoped for. And so I'm trying to figure out, well, maybe, maybe where you're coming from on gun control is not, is not what you thought, like you thought it was about helping people, but maybe it's about something else. Or, or would that be enough? Like if you saw people okay, they're starting to use pipe bombs now. Maybe this gun control thing wasn't a great idea. Well, I mean, I see what you're saying. Like where there's a will, there's a way. Like if you have a plan in place to hurt a lot of people, you're probably going to find a way to do it. Yeah. Um, for example, you probably remember this when... Um, somebody made bombs out of pressure cookers. <laughs> like sure, yeah. you could just go to a kitchen store and buy yeah. like a kitchen yeah. item. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I feel like yeah, a certain number of people every year, um, you know, have their hot water heater blow up because it overpressured. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean. I think that guns are one piece of the puzzle, right? In terms of violence, but I think they're like 
a bigger piece of the puzzle than say like making a pressure cooker bomb. Sure, sure. I guess we're we're considering we're considering this world where we've enacted the law and people mm-hmm. switch from guns to pressure cookers. Right. And and so the question is, right, are you still against guns even if the law isn't helping people? This is a hypothetical, I mean, I think I would be. I just personally do not like guns. Okay. All right. (laughs) So that's great. They freak me out. (laughs) That's great because we've we've sort of peeled back a layer, right? Right. It seems like maybe there's a different reason that you're against guns. Right. I mean, I will say that, like, in my house growing up, we had, like, air rifles and BB guns and things like that. And I have shot those guns before. Mm -hmm you know, with an adult present, but it's like, you know, they weren't locked up. Like my brother or I could have easily had access to them, but we knew better. Yeah. Um, you know, going to Florida to visit my grandparents, you know, we had a cousin who was like really into guns. You could get a gun really easily down there. He would like show us his guns and it was just really freaky to me because it's like, you know, how do I know this person knows how to handle a gun? Is the safety on? Like, is is the gun loaded? Like, sure. don't, you know, sure. do you know how to hold a gun when it's loaded? So it's like, you have access, so easy access to these weapons that could easily yeah. harm somebody if you make a mistake. And even people who I feel like have handled guns for many years have also sure you know still made mis- like dick cheney <laughs> mm-hmm. sure, yes. well i mean debatable whether that was an accident but like <laughs> i you know it just seems like they're just yeah, really they're scary. dangerous scary things scary, to have yeah. and if you don't know how to use them and even if you do like you could still fatally hurt somebody or send them to the hospital so yeah. They're definitely dangerous, and and I'm hearing that you you think they're scary. They're scary, yeah. Okay. Do you think maybe that's the reason why you're at a hundred percent? Yeah, probably, most likely. Okay. I mean, I feel like when it all boils down to it, our emotions sort of lead us sure. in how we think about everything. Absolutely. So Absolutely. it's like. <laughs> okay. So, so my question is, do you think the best place for you to be is at a hundred percent, considering that what's getting you to a hundred percent is an emotion? Well, I mean, like, I, tr- I trust my emotions. So do you? yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Do you think, do you think that our emotions, that one's emotions could lead us to a belief that is actually wrong or hurtful? I think that they can, yeah. But I don't feel like mine are. <laughs> we don't <need> to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay, I'm with you. So let's imagine, let's imagine, um, let's imagine an, another Blair out mm-hmm. in California. Mm-hmm. Okay, and and this Blair um, came to exactly the opposite belief based on fear. So let's let's imagine that she was thinking, you know what? I'm I'm so scared. Mm-hmm. I'm so scared of being attacked at night or I'm so scared of having my home invaded. I really want a gun to protect myself. Mm-hmm. And she's at a hundred percent that she needs that gun. Right. How how can we figure out which of these two completely contradictory players are have the better position well i feel like there's a lot to be said about peace of mind like especially being a woman if you're alone you want to feel safe and secure and i understand that but at the same time if you have a home invasion, I just wonder how having a gun 
would help you because a yeah. i feel like if you're being safe about it you're putting it into some sort of like locked box so if you have okay. any small children they can't have access to it first of all like have you loaded the gun okay. is it a loaded gun in a safe box if there's somebody in your home, you wake up in the middle of the night, you're half asleep, you're like fumbling at the lock, sure. you're like fumbling with the bullets in the dark, sure. like, sure. no, you're first, you should call 911 instead of wasting time trying to like open up this locked box, you'll be dead. So those are, those are really good arguments, but do you think that they would make Blair feel better? If she heard my arguments or if right. she had the gun. Yeah, no, no, no. If she, if she, right. Cause this, this, um, anti Blair, other Blair is, is out there thinking, I am so scared of being attacked. This gun makes me feel better. It makes me feel safer. And you were to present these arguments to her. Do you think it would do anything to allay her fears? No, but like, are her fears even valid? Is she just being like, okay. <laughs> Like I would want to know what is That's what is fantastic. it that yeah. happened that are you are so afraid of protecting your home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so here's my question. How do you know that you're not that that Blair? Right? You're you're also arguing from a position of fear. Mm -hmm. And and if we were to talk about arguments in different ways, you would say, you know what, I'm not interested in your arguments because this fear is meaningful to me. Do you see yeah, what I'm coming from? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess. Like, we're both afraid. Right. But I think, but like... Can you both be right? Can you both have the best plan? I don't know. I just look at the statistics in terms of like home invasions and Yeah, yeah, but you now you're back to using reason and logic and, and <laughs> the other Blair's not gonna listen to that. She's scared. So so I'm gonna ask uh... I'm gonna ask this again. Is it possible that both of you are right about the best course of action? Can both of you be right? No. Okay. Now you think she's wrong. <laughs> yes. Right? But she thinks you're wrong. Right. So how can how can I, an outside observer, figure out which of you has the better plan? I mean, I'm just gonna go back to reason and logic. Like I <laughs> Okay. That's all like that. Like, I cannot think in hypotheticals like this when it comes to like, when you have information that's easily accessible to you, like you're not going to be the one person that happens to shoot an invader. I understand. So I'm going to, I'm going to point out something and I hope okay. this isn't, I hope this isn't, doesn't, it doesn't, you don't, doesn't hit you the wrong way. Okay. But we were talking about, right. Reasoning through things before. And, and you told me that you were at 100% probably because of your fears, not because of the reasoning. Because well, even if you were to find out, even if you were to find out that your plan didn't help people, you would still be at 100%. So maybe you're not using reason and logic to get to 100%. Right. Like, I guess I'm using it reason and logic to justify like a rationalization yeah yeah now the other blair is using the same thing right because you say um you're ridiculous uh and she says well do you know how many um how many intruders have been stopped by by guns how many intruders don't even try because they're worried the person has a gun she has all sorts of statistics to to rationalize her point but ultimately her point is coming from fear. Right. So I'm going to I'm going to ask again. I'm I'm an outside observer and I see these two people who have plans, who both have plans, 
and they can't both be the best plan, how do we figure out which plan is the best? Hmm. I don't know. That's tough. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot that goes into that. Um, do you think, do you think that using the feelings to get to such a high confidence level is trustworthy? If it can lead both of you to opposite conclusions. Hmm. I... Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Because it's like, I mean, I see what you're saying about my emotions leading my decisions. And like, part of it is like, like, it's hard for me to think about like, what came first? Was it my fear or like the statistics around like gun violence that has led mm -hmm. me to think this way? And I don't think it's like either or it's like both have informed the other. It's like, uh -huh. I'm afraid I don't like guns. I don't like handling guns. So it's like, yeah. I look at information that of course, yeah makes me feel like it is it's cognitive dissonance right when like I, i'm gonna make a decision <laughs> yeah okay. when when i spoke to the other blair she said mm -hmm. she keeps reading statistics about how many women are attacked at night and she reads statistics about home invasions and she says i'm not sure which one came first the feeling or the statistics but i have both mm. <sighs> I mean, but at the same time, like there aren't statistics around like having a gun makes you safer. What so I just, you... I just don't see how that's like even an argument. Do you think that such a person doesn't exist? That a person like uh, California Blair doesn't exist? Yeah. No, lots of people like California okay. Blair exist. <clears throat> and and she's read things right that that say that women are attacked at night and and they need to be to defend themselves and and they're she's read things about people using guns to defend their home um and so we're we're back to sort of the same question how can we figure out what is it, what's a reliable with method to figure out which of you two has the best plan? Hmm. Is it, is it feelings? Is it who has the stronger feelings? I mean, I, I guess it's who has the stronger feelings like, like, honestly, if she were feeling really unsafe and it was validated and like, you know, she's maybe alone, she's, maybe, you know, two years ago, she was attacked. Yeah. And having the gun in her purse makes her feel better. Mm hmm. So I heard you say that maybe the feelings, who has the stronger feelings is the best way to figure out who has the best plan. Is that what you said? No. I mean, it's so complex. It's like, I mean, we're assuming these things are like happening in a vacuum of sorts. And it's like, I just can't, you're a person in the world. You can control how you're reacting to something in, in the moment, but like there are other people interacting with you. <laughs> so it's like even the best laid plans, Yeah. Do you it, think... it depends on other people. 
So I hear the argument you're making. Do you think that it would hold any water with the other Blair? As she clutches her purse. I don't know. Do you, do you think she's going to go, oh, you know what? You make such a great point. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to give this gun to the local depository and I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to walk to the coffee shop at 10 o'clock at night. Uh, no. Okay. So, right, she's she's cemented in, in this belief because of her feelings. Yes. And, and I think we agree that you're at 100 percent because of your feelings. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe maybe without the feelings, you'd still be at 90, but the thing that got you to 100 is your feelings. Yeah. Do, do you think feelings are trustworthy if they can lead to opposite conclusions? I mean, yeah, I guess feelings aren't. Okay. I don't think feelings are trustworthy. Okay. In this regard, I guess. Now, I'm not saying they're not important, right? They're super right. important. Right. It's an important factor. They're super important. But, but maybe I also not feel like I also feel like you think I am I, I know I said I was afraid of guns and like I I am afraid of guns in different settings. Like I'm less afraid of guns if we're at a shooting range, for example. Like okay. that is where a gun, you would expect to see a gun there, right? Yep. <laughs> it's a shooting range. Right. If I am at a at somebody's private home yeah. and I see them take a gun out, that's when I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, sure. put that away. So it's sure. like, I my fear level increases and decreases based on like- Like the thing, the, the concept. Is, yeah, the scenario yeah. you imagine, yeah. yeah. So it's like I am comfortable being around guns at a shooting range, for example. Sure. I am not in a home. Sure. But when you're thinking about should we ban guns? Yeah. What scenario are you thinking about? I'm thinking about like you know, the person with the assault rifle yeah. that's like bringing it to, a, to movie a, a movie theater. Now that the feeling that you have when you imagine that scenario is pretty hot, right? Like that feeling is, it's not like, oh, I'm relaxed. I'm just thinking about this, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. like, it's like fear <laughs> and spiky and, and scary, right? Right. And that's the same fear that the other player feels when she thinks about mm -hmm. two years ago when she when she was out late mm -hmm. and she got attacked. Well, it sounds like she needs counseling. <laughs> You're probably <laughs> right. You're probably right. Um, may maybe everybody could do with a little counseling. Right. Um, but but OK, so I don't I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I heard that maybe you're thinking that because feelings can lead to two completely opposite conclusions that maybe they're not 100 percent trustworthy right like you can be afraid of something that's not likely to hurt you it's possible right like i'm afraid of spiders right. <laughs> like they're not right. gonna hurt okay. me <laughs> so do you think being at a hundred percent against gun control is the most honest place to be honest well, the, the best place to be, right? The, the most accurate, the most reasonable, the most justified place to be. I mean, yeah, because it's like, I would want to protect myself too if I were in California Blair's situation. Like, I would want to learn how to um, protect myself. But could I live with myself if I killed someone? Sure. Like, I don't... I don't know how I would overcome that. that and I, I, I do not think that people truly think about that as being a consequence. Sure. And so I'm hearing, I'm hearing you present another scenario. Yeah. And that scenario brings up emotions. Yeah. 
do you think that maybe this is more feelings that you're using to, to get you to this high confidence? I... Because it's a truly terrifying yeah. thing to think about. Yeah. I mean, feelings are where the passion lies. It's not yeah. in statistics. Yeah, you yeah, get yeah. Passion. Some people yeah. get passionate about numbers, yeah. but it's like we're talking about human beings here absolutely absolutely and uh, it's like <laughs> but if passion can lead us to two opposite conclusions yeah. two contradictory conclusions and when we're left with two people who have two opposing beliefs is feelings is passion a good way to figure out the best course of action no. Okay. Right. I don't think that you should 100% lead with your feelings. Okay. So, all right. I think, I think that's, that's a great place to stop. Um, 